Like, how do you start this thing? Oh, there must be a button that says start. No, that was front trunk. <laughs> Something really weird happens when two We've people get to share a car journey. And had like a problematic period of alcohol in my life. You know, you get relaxed. You start saying things about yourself, things that you normally don't share. Because I've been uh, in therapy for a long time myself. Oh, I didn't know that about you. Okay. I'm using the power of persuasion from cars like this one to get people you know and love to tell some of their deepest and darkest, and I cannot wait to do it. And you get to see it all. Yeah, I can't believe it either. So it's another day behind the wheel for me in this. Tesla Model S. It's pretty slick, it's electric, and it's the first time that I'm driving an electric car, and I'm so excited because today I get to meet someone almost, well, in fact, a hell of a lot more impressive than these wheels. Uh, she's super smart, and I'm fascinated by just some of the things that she's achieved, and it's all happening in this car. I'm picking up and having a chat with the lovely Katie Piper. Fancy. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Thanks for picking me up. Anytime. I feel very flash in this thing. <laughs> Look at this. This is wicked. Oh, well, I'm only in this because of you. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, braving a car journey with me. <laughs> Thanks for picking me up. Yeah, no, no. I could no be. Bus. <laughs> yeah, I could be the world's worst driver. You seem very relaxed, which I like. Well, I'm, I'm going to trust you because <laughs> we're in my dream car, essentially, aren't we? Okay, so you love an electric car, right? Why, why is that? Yeah, well, I, there's a few reasons. When they first came out, I was like, wow, that's really cool. Um, and what I use a car for, you know, I'm a mum, I'm a, mom, I'm a working mum, so when I'm using a car, it's usually with the kids on little short journeys. And I don't think I could justify being like a big carbon footprint carrying around two little tiny babies. Right. How long was it before you uh, passed your test then? I was quite early, so I learned to drive as soon as I could. I was like 17. Right. And, did you um, pass first time? Yeah, I did. Oh, so you're one of I those. I like a real geek. Uh, right? Hang on a second, right. So people that pass first time, apparently, not my saying, are the worst drivers. Well, I haven't got a good track record, so that's probably true. Okay, well, let's, let's put this to the test. Okay, so I passed on my second time. Right. I, I've never had an accident, touch wood. Um, I've never had any problems, never had any issues with my car. Right. You passed the first time. Yeah. And... <laughs> Go on. Well, I haven't, for the first five years of driving, I didn't need to sell a car because I wrote them all off. <laughs> how, how many, it was never my fault. It was of course never it was never your fault. fault. How, many, how many cars did you write off? Uh, three. Jeez, are you yeah. serious? So and then, then, then that stopped. How safe do you feel behind the wheel now? And just for the record, I'm really glad that I'm the one driving. Yeah, well, yeah. Today, I was like, when they were talking about what car we're driving, I was like, oh, I, I didn't. I just agreed to this. I'm not <laughs> driving. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, now I'm really safe. Now I've gone the other end. Like, now I'm a mum. I'm like really conscious of all those kind of things. Um, and I drive the tiniest car, and I'm the really annoying person that goes a few miles per hour under the speed limit right. for good measure. Okay. Uh, do you know, I, I looked you up a little bit. Right. Uh, just you didn't before. misspell it and get Katie Price. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was going to ask you about your pink Range Rover. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> Rip that off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let that fall down the hill. No, I did, I did a little looking up. And um, one of the things that really made me laugh, but it told me a hell of a lot about you, and I think it's actually kind of apt based on what we're talking about, is right. the fact that you've had two autobiographies. Yes. Right? Yeah. Now, I genuinely would take this opportunity to take the mick out of you for at least 35 <laughs> minutes but it almost feels as though they correct me if I'm wrong here yeah each autobiography is telling a massive chunk of your life and it's almost as though you've had two very different lives yeah so it's funny you say it because I that's how I view my life right. almost like I had two separate ones my first autobiography very much um, minimally touches on my time at Harrods and writing off cars um, <laughs> <laughs> just to set the scene at yeah. the beginning yeah. and then the bulk of that autobiography is obviously you know what happened to me mm. um, and how I was attacked and how I was burnt um, which that whole part of my life because it was such a life-changing trauma the one of the lasting effects it has made me feel a lot older than I am and and I've sort of been through things that some people hopefully will never have to go through course, yeah. or would go through when you naturally um, approach disease and old age and disability right. and that kind of thing so it always feels like a lifetime of um, emotions that I've been through and it was a funny one right because when I wrote that autobiography I wasn't offered a book deal per se I wrote it um, on spec you just decided to well my therapist told me to just write privately for like um, reasons to, like cathartic reasons right and then um, like eight nine months on 
I decided to send it off in like the worst, like, in, like a word document with right. really bad, like my mum's a school teacher and she was like, the grammar in that was horrendous. <laughs> you at least justified the text <laughs> yeah. so it was at yeah. least looking block square. All, right? all in comic sans. That- <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it, obviously, as as you do in in that industry, I either didn't get replies yes. or polite n- no, no thank right, yous. Okay. And then eventually, uh, only one person was interested. So it wasn't like I was in a bidding war to mm. be able to get the best sort of deal. And then that book went on to be like a Sunday Times bestseller. Amazing. It's gone to thirty four different countries. Yeah. yeah, it's been to countries I haven't been to. Languages I can't read. It's been translated to. That's incredible. At the time of doing that. I wasn't employed and I was on disability allowance and job seekers allowance. And you were 24. Yeah, and I was earning 70 quid a week of benefits. Um, So what a con, and also you can imagine for someone like me not being able to work and be on benefits hit me hard. Yeah. It was horrible. Um, And then after the success of that book, then the publishers approached me and said, we want to work with you in this space. And then came the advance check. Yeah, exactly. And then I was like, wow, this is great. (laughs) This is Um, nice. Yeah. And then, you know, my story continued and the second autobiography was more about, so what did actually happen after that that life changing moment Mm. and and how did this, I suppose, in a commercial sense, like what's the ending and, you know, where am I at now? Yes. Um, And in terms of like, would I write another autobiography? I don't think I would now. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll hold (laughs) you to that because in 15 years there's another book because from where I stand at least you're turning the corner and going into this new position where you are you know you're the the figurehead for so many people uh, who've experienced something and and for so many causes as well is that is that a responsibility that you didn't ask for well, it's, when it comes to the amount of people that look at you. Yeah, uh, I mean, context. it's weird because I think there is a time when somebody wants to stop talking about something and, and not be a figurehead for something. So for me, um, like I set up a charity about nine years ago and the goal was to set up a scar management centre in this country because there wasn't one. And I in had, the whole UK? Yes, yeah, so I had to travel abroad for a lot of my treatment. Right. Just last week, we launched a rehab centre in the UK. Wow. So, yeah, so it's taken. Wow, it's congratulations. Taken a, thank you. I mean, it's not just me, it's a team of trustees and other burn survivors. Um, but that took a decade to do. Um, but what is a great feeling is now, um, you know, I'm, I'm really involved with it all, but there's also other burn survivors there that are advocates, that are campaigners for it, that are spokespersons. Yes. And that's nice to hand that over and say, they're great to be spokespeople for this issue and they're in the right place for their own recovery where it's helpful. Mm. Whereas if for me, I you know, very much feel that the, the success of that would be able to walk away and not constantly talk about it because that's almost being defined by it. Yeah. Oversharing sometimes isn't productive or helpful. You have so had oh. therapy, it's unreal. I talk like the therapist. I'm, I'm, no, well, not even that. I'm just, I'm just hearing the words and the language that you get given uh, when you start because I've been uh, in therapy for a long time myself. Oh, I didn't and, know that about you. Okay. Uh, no, I think it's imperative. I think we yeah. should all have it. I mean, I've said this a million times before mm. and I'll say it again. It's, you know, we're all taught to look after our teeth but none of us are taught to look after our brain yeah. which to me makes no sense. I know. And I think with um, so much available on the NHS, you know, there is this weird association with therapy as being something that you can only access if you're rich yeah whereas in reality or last chance saloon because you're about to be admitted to a psych ward you're crazy exactly but whereas in reality you can access it through your gp you know you don't need to get to the point where you're sectioned before you ask for help yeah prevention Um, not cure exactly yeah just looking at what you've achieved what you've done your strength of character the fact that you're helping so many people how do you feel that your children will navigate that your daughters specifically you've got two girls yeah. and their mum is Wonder Woman like, well, I don't what? know I mean you never think of yourself in, in that way right. I think firstly and you know my eldest is four and a half my youngest is only ten months and I'm already super proud of both of them mm. and I always will and do credit them for me being who I am mm. um, because I went through quite a difficult time um, with not coping and had like a problematic period of alcohol in my life as a coping mechanism and it was kind of like meeting my current husband and starting a family that stopped me from um, destructive behavior and that self-sabotaging quite a lot because I had a pattern for self-sabotage so having a pregnancy having to going back to the role model thing having people that were going to look up to me Mm. really helped me so you know any pressure they ever feel to live up to something they were the backbone of that they were my reason you know Um, and I will always be very 
you know, my daughter's asking me questions now about my appearance and things like that. Right. And I am very um, honest with my children. Yeah. I don't um, try to frighten them, but I, I like to be a realist about things mm. um, because I, I just think that that's an important life skill for them to always have that that kind of understanding to have so they can have resilience and, and, and empathy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So as, as a parent then, how do you frame that? Because obviously there is a point where you're going to have to explain to your children um, what happened as opposed to them reading it, which is a ch which yeah. there's a massive chance of because of yeah. your profile. Um, not to pry, but how do you frame information that is that sensitive with your kids? Um, oh God, I mean, some people might disagree with what I do, but say, for example, things like um, at night I have to wear... Um, like plastic tubing in my nose to help me breathe. Right, wow. So my daughter will be like, she'll clean her teeth and be like, where are my tubes? That's and right. I'm like, oh no, you don't need Kids them. Kids are the best. Right? Yeah, <laughs> she's like, it's not fair. Like, why, why have you got tubes? And I'm like, well, you know, it's, you know, when I was younger, I remember I got burnt and she's like, was it on the oven? I'm like, no, um, you know, somebody tried to hurt me when I was younger. Um, and it, it was quite bad at the time, but now it's all gone and I'm better. But obviously, where they did hurt me, it, it, the marks are still there, and, right. and the tubes are part of that. And, and she's like, "Oh, um, who was the man?" And and then I'll know the boundary. I'll say, "Oh, I can't remember uh, who it right. was, but I do know that they've gone now." And then the following night, she'll be like, "Have you remembered that man yet?" And she's like, "Do you think it was Grandpa?" Oh, and I'm like, no, I "She don't. sounds amazing." And it's you know, it's funny, but it's open conversations you yeah. know I've really enjoyed chatting to you today you've been awesome <laughs> genuinely Aww, no, it's, no it's just really nice to, to to just hear from you how what you've not only experienced but what you've learned has gone on to help so many other people and how it's sort of reshaping what you're going to do for this next chapter I guess it's a two-way thing because those people have helped me and the wider public have and talking and sharing my story has helped me learn more about myself and it's helped me gain closure as well right um, and move forward onto new projects and and discover new parts of myself so i think it's a an, an equal relationship in that way yeah i've loved hanging out with you today yeah, I, me I believe too. this is your stop ah excellent well thank you Pleasure i've had a, i've had a great time and i've learned so much as well so. really yeah it's Something been like really been good me, um, <laughs> well, i've learned how to use this <laughs> yeah. monster i'm yeah. still figuring it out to use it. Um, all right it should uh, be open Wicked. Right, Take care you. of yourself. Bye -bye. Nice Bye -bye. to see you. I'm so excited by the conversation I've just had with Katie Piper. She is brilliant and inspirational and super smart. And it's because of her that I've got to drive my first ever electric car. I've been flying around in this thing all day. And um, I'm probably going to take it home. Is that all right? Am I allowed? Too bad the decision's been made. Done. If you like the video you just saw with the incredible Katie Piper, make sure you hit like and subscribe and maybe tell a friend or your mother or your grandmother and everybody else that you've ever met in your life while you're at it. Thanks. <laughs>